The sign of Benjamin Netanyahu is very similar to the sign of Donald Trump. Watch for what happens with him in the fall time. I was woken up to a dream almost two years ago, and I began to, to pray out, and I began to cry out on behalf of Benjamin Netanyahu, and I began to make that the big announcement that God showed me two years ago, and I put that down on record. You can go date stamp it. I put a picture of his face out on our Facebook and Instagram and all these places, and I began to pray for his safety. What I believe with this is they want to take him out of the way so he doesn't become a populist mover in his arena. Now, here's the deal. I've been praying for that man for two years, just like I was praying for the 45th president. Now, what is the issue with this? I believe strongly he has a, a an anointing as a father in an area and a father to a nation. I do believe that they will try and take his, his time on this planet away. Netanyahu is going to hit the news. He's coming. I saw him at the beginning of 2020, and I released a word where I was praying for his life. Okay, I felt like there was an attempt to take him out. Okay, but I do believe that he's going to rise up. There's going to be a really powerful um, things that begin to rise here. And this is going to be very, very good. Uh, Netanyahu is going to stand up at a greater capacity. I see this coming. Benjamin Netanyahu says a drone's been launched towards his home in the northern town of Caesarea. Yeah, what we do know is that three drones were launched, presumably from southern Lebanon uh, this morning. They crossed over into Israeli airspace and the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, says two of those drones were intercepted, but that one of them uh, continued uh, towards Caesarea, which is where Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has a private residence uh, and that it hit or impacted into something there. We did have that statement from the Prime Minister's office in the last half an hour or so, making it clear that Prime Minister Netanyahu and his wife were not uh, at the residence uh, at the time and that there had been uh, no casualties. I had a prophetic vision, a night vision actually, involving Mark Cuban. And I saw Mark Cuban in this vision, and of course we have events going on right now. We're about to release a, a series of prophetic words I've given over the last five years about Netanyahu. So we'll be posting that very soon. Date stamping is showing all the prophecies we've given regarding what just happened with the attempt on him and what that means and how it parallels uh, 45. So we'll be putting that up very soon. But let me say something about this, this vision, night vision I had about Mark Cuban. When I had this vision, I saw something that involved him with an imposter spirit. And this imposter scenario was that he was gonna try and bring forth a technology to compete with Elon or try to do an imposter version of what Elon is doing. And now look, once again, I believe that there's a mixed bag in the picture of all these guys. And by the way, I'm not driving uh, Mr. Chandler uh, and of course, Elijah. But this imposter spirit, I saw him in a vision coming out like in a lab coat and he came out standing and he had an announcement to make. And he was trying to do a form of technology that was better than what Elon was bringing forward. And it had to do with robotics. It had to do with a form of um, a robotic entity, something like that, that came forward and stood uh, at this entry point to a laboratory and he was making an announcement. And the bottom line is, I believe that there is something involving him that he's going to try to bring out his form of what Elon's doing. And so I'm praying because whether by many or by few, or even if the Lord is working through people that will have nefarious plans and scenarios later on, right now, God is working with some of these characters. So I want to release that word because I saw Mark Cuban. And again, I want to say this to you. I said this um, mildly um, about two days ago on the broadcast for a quick live broadcast prophetic report. And um, this prophetic report I'm giving you, I believe that the life of 46 is on the line. And we've got to pray that that doesn't happen. You say, who's 46? Well, it rhymes with Biden. <laughs> okay. And so I'm believing that there is going to be protection for the sake of the election. And when we see this protection for the sake of the election has to do with the fact that they would even allow something to happen to usher her in. And I was um, speaking with Perry Stone about this and he has that word and it's a word that I've shared, but Perry really has been a centerpiece in sharing this word, uh, really something that God gave him in a revelatory numerical way that it's possible, possible that 
486 could be removed, taken down, uh, diminished, or unalived, right? And then she could step in for a moment and become 47, but 45 still win, Trump still win, and go in as 48. And that's something that I've been praying about as well, because I believe very clearly they could indeed allow something that would, would induce that. Now, we, we are still writing that, that narrative of the transitional season with Jimmy Carter. And what we're looking at there is very, um, very serious, meaning there will be a transitional generational doorway that shows the new season has begun when he leaves this earth. Now, I'm just telling you, so here's just a quick summary. I'm gonna be putting out um, a video showing all the prophetic words we've given about Netanyahu very soon, maybe even later today, uh, with date stamps through the live broadcast so you can see it uh, and over the years, and it's unfolding right before us, which I believe lends itself to saying that Trump will go back. If, if what I'm seeing is true regarding the narrative of Netanyahu and the attempt against him, similar to the attempt against 45, then that means 45 is going back in, is what I have seen, meaning this parallel. So it's very interesting. Um, but I, I woke up yesterday to a, a dream, a night vision of um, Mark Cuban, and he was trying to be an imposter. He's got an imposter spirit to what Elon is doing, and it involved technology. So don't be surprised if he comes out with some flashy technology trying to compete or compare or buy up a number of things or somehow manufacture the similar platform to what Elon is doing to try to make a, a wave or a ripple or say this is better. But I see a spirit of imposter syndrome uh, or a competing counterfeit narrative to try to bring that out. So we're going to be praying about that. I saw that. I, I literally saw him in a vision. And then also we've got to really be praying over this Netanyahu narrative. Netanyahu with that attempt that just happened, it's something the Lord showed me going all the way back to 2019 and then uh, 21 and 22. Uh, we'll show you the clips. And I believe it's a parallel to where we are right now. And as it goes for Netanyahu, it will go for 45, and there is a lot of parallels to be said. So the fact that they didn't succeed means, just like that assassination attempt didn't work, I believe it means that 45 is likely going back in. Um, and we got to pray because it's the Lord spoke to me. It'll go right to the one yard line. Uh, there's a lot that can happen between now and then, and it is not just a a um, a done deal. We've got to pray. We've got to believe God and we've got to see this whole thing through. And then we've got like 60 days after that going all the way into January. So we've got a lot to pray about. It's still ours to lose. It's still the church's to lose. Um, this is not set in stone. And if it goes the other direction, we've got to pray and intercede and be the body of Christ. But I'm telling you, this is what I sense. This is how I'm interpreting this at the moment. And we've got to stand up and we've got to pray because the Lord is with us. Now, I'm going to do a, a broadcast. By the way, be praying for us. We, are, we have been on a nine-day journey uh, we're going from place to place to place, and it's been wonderful. We just got done at Daystar, and Daystar is so wonderful for their heart. For that reaches so many people, and you recognize that these these things that the Lord is doing is just powerful. So we've been on a long journey. Uh, we're going uh, from place to place to place, and I'll tell you, it's it's powerful. And I think we have like, my goodness, like nine different meetings uh, in a week, and we're we're thankful. And so thank you for sending us. Thank you for uh, partnering. And of course, the only way you partner is you go to josephz.com or you text the keyword give to 719. Hear it from me, 719-259-0029. That's how you partner, the text to give way or you go to the website josephz.com. And I say that because we will never call you, we'll never solicit you, ever. So when you hear from us, please go to josephz.com. That's how you partner. It's safe. It's secure. And you will hear from us. We will call you, but never to solicit. If you ever get a phone call and somebody's soliciting you or it sounds like me, it is not us. And the way you make sure is we only do resources at josephz.com.
www.thepowerofthenow.com. You go there. Um, and I'll tell you, we have people that will reach out to you. Our team does it. It's not a call center. It's not AI. We actually call you because we care about you. We believe high touch beats high tech, and that is so important to us. So if you're a partner here, we love you. Thank you for your prayers for us. We are on assignment, and I'll be back live again in the mornings regularly very soon, but right now we're, we're just traveling, so thank you for your prayers. And uh, we need your support and your help, and if you're considering partnering, we'd love to welcome you to the partner family, and we will be reaching out to you and calling you. Love you so much. Jesus is Lord. Thank you for reposting this as a quick prophetic summary. I want to give you some of the things I've been seeing and praying about, and we'll be putting out a video about Benjamin Netanyahu. And thank you so much for all of your support and your prayer and standing with us. Right now, we are in a very monumental moment. There's things happening that um, that God's got us involved with on a global scope, uh, involving leaders of nations and things, and we're so grateful to the Spirit of the Lord Jesus helping us do these things. We believe we're in a monumental time, and your support is pivotal right now. It's just so pivotal. So if you're looking to partner or stand with us, please do so. JosephZ.com. Jesus is Lord. We love you, and Jesus is coming back soon, very soon. The Lord is with you. Remember, on a bad day, you're anointed to be the best there is. And uh, we love you. Thank you for your prayers. We'll be talking to you very soon. Please share this everywhere you can. These words are important. And watch for the video we put out about Netanyahu with all the prophetic words we've given. And uh, somebody's saying, I keep getting friend requests from you. We don't do that. We don't do that. So God bless you guys. Talk to you soon. Black swans, disruptions, sabotage, issues, all of that is something that I sense so powerfully in the air that leading up to this, this moment where we're picking our leaders and it begins to go into this category of choice that we see now over the next few days. Uh, everything from, you know, you're, you're seeing the legalization by the current, current Venturian administration that they want to allow or they're preparing the way or have made it possible for the powers that be to use forces against the people of this nation. And uh, without just saying it plainly, that's what they're trying to do. And that's something that they're allowing. And they're telling the narrative that 45 in that scenario is the ones that are planning to do it. They're telling you what their plan is. Now, the word of the Lord that's come to me over and over again is to watch for signs such as solar flares, when they begin to talk about things that are happening beyond our atmosphere that could begin to destroy uh, all things that we're looking at, meaning meaning the power grids, things are going on, they could declare a form of martial da, 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 law, and we don't want to see that happen. So we got to pray. This is something I sense coming, that there's a desperation because they're getting whooped, meaning the, the foul, dark side of this thing is getting defeated to such a level on even, even mainstream polls. You're seeing it everywhere, that there is an absolute losing narrative for the other side of things. So because of that, they're going to begin to respond. They're going to lash out. They're going to do it in every way they can. They're like a cornered animal. And this is where it's going. So we got to pray because this is now ours to lose. It is now the churches to lose. And we've got to stand up. Could they pull a quick one? They're trying to right now. They're already trying to. And so we've got to pray. We've got to stand. And you say, who's they? Those who are in power right now. And I'm telling you, I sense this. Now, I'm not driving, just so everybody knows. I always get comments, are you driving? No, uh, Jason's there driving. There's uh, there's HZ, the beautiful Heather. And so we're we're here and, and you know we're traveling, we're going to locations and doing the word of the Lord and the will of God. And I gotta tell you, the Lord is making a way for you. And we've gotta be astute, we gotta be on this. And if you haven't done uh, the pre thing where you go out and, and drop your ballot and do the things, you gotta do it as soon as you can ahead of the game. You gotta be ahead of the game. We're doing it ahead of time. And we're coming into this moment. So I sense a, a, a time of chaos that's trying to erupt and come forward. I sense the things where they want to shake things. They want to get people into a place of chaos. Blame it on the good guys. They want to cause it and then blame it on the good guys. And that's what I see coming right now. So you got to hear this. The word of the Lord is, is that there is a, a time of redemptive instability we're going into. And people say, oh, no, I think for sure he's going in. Well, I got to tell you, we are going to take it right to the one yard line. And then even after this, there's going to be so much more. 
there's going to be so much more that begins to unravel and and transpire even if he yes and check what you what you do double check what you do and when you drop it in make sure you double check and triple check it and uh, especially if it's a form of digital when you're entering that you know I, I I believe it's too big to to lose but at the same time when we're looking at this there's going to be something else they'll do they'll try to offset it now I know the sense I have is regarding what's going on in Israel Iran that's going to be a major factor in this if they if they can get to that point we got to keep praying I think we can turn this stuff away the other thing is if suddenly he gets through and wins then what's going to happen is now we have what you know two months we have from uh, November to January till he's even put back in and, and these things take place we got to pray that whole time because they're going to pull all kinds of stunts between now and then between now and then even if after the fact he's the elect the president elect and he goes that that road something crazy could happen where they still remove uh the manchurian from office and then they they do a big shake up in the middle of everything who knows what they'll pull but the bottom line is, I sense this, that they're going to try to pull a, a stunt that's beyond what people have anticipated. It's a multifaceted, revolutionary, in a negative way, type of event. I sense this black swan narrative. I sense the thing where they're telling us what they're going to do by blaming it on him. And so I'm telling you right now, in the name of Jesus... Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And the strength of God, the word of God, is pushing back against this nefarious agenda. They are shocked. I'm telling you right now, darkness is shocked and they're on their heels because none of their plans are working. Nothing they've planned for is operating the way that they, their nefarious plots have gone. The way they've operated has not been working and it's shocking to them. It's frustrating to them. It's angering them. So it's going to take everything they have at their disposal to take action action against what we see coming and i'm telling you the word of the lord will continue to offset it no different than when there was a a, a shot heard around the world that stopped and it was stopped against the you know the, the the man who's called the same way that that was averted the same way we missed uh the the cataclysmic events that have tried to come against us one after another I'm telling you we're in a moment of mercy and this moment of mercy is going to turn into a momentum if we can pray it through and we've got to pray it through we got to see it through because it's ours to lose and if they do a little midnight change of, of events and they could they could do it on a widespread level. It's going to be harder for them because there's more eyes on things right now. But I'm telling you, all of this is up in the air right now. If all things were equal, he goes in. But they're not equal. We've got to pray this through. We've got to see it through. But I'm telling you, we're going from a time of mercy to a time of momentum. Should we see the goodness of the Lord begin to advance through the body of Christ? And I believe the Lord is saying his will is that we see victory for our children's children in the capacity that we're walking in right now. Now, listen. You got to be bold. You got to move in a spirit of joy. What do I mean by that? I'm not talking about the goofy kind of commie joy they're talking about. I'm talking about the uh, the Nehemiah joy, that the joy of the Lord that is your strength to the other side, all the way to the other side. And the spirit of the Lord is going to bring an awakening to his people, to the body of Christ. And I believe even the wicked elites are going to be shaken because of the prayers of the righteous that are availing much. You know who's really winning this? Grandmothers. Grandmothers that are praying for their children's children. There are grandmothers that are praying. There are those that are seeking the face of God. There are those, there are those that are lining up with his will on earth as it is in heaven. And we're beginning to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, please listen to me. You can't shrink back. You got to lean into it. We're being sent right now on several assignments. And, um, I was just on, on Troy Brewer's podcast. We we're talking about it and, um, he, he'd mentioned this, but it's true. I, I got invited to another special meeting. We couldn't do the one in North Carolina, but there's another one uh, with with Trump. And there's a number of us that are going. And uh, God willing, we'll get to pray and see what the Lord has there. So be praying for us. Uh, this coming week, it looks like we're going to have um, at least a, a closeness to to him we'll see what happens but we're praying about this and we're seeing what god has and i believe a lot of leaders are going to have one more 
one more unified moment to be with uh, to be with who we believe God's calling into that place of office. So that's what I'm believing God for, that we're going to begin to see that. So we're praying, be praying for us. You guys are sending us. We're going to at least intercede, if nothing else. And there's a lot of powerful leaders that are going into that place. This is just a recent development. And um, I'm really, I'm really honored that we've been um, asked to be a part of some of these things. So be praying for us. We're praying for you. We're praying for this nation. We're praying for what's going on around the world. We're praying over Israel right now with what's taking place there. The Spirit of the Lord is making a great way of understanding. And I got to tell you, we are getting results. You know, when witches come out and they make an announcement that says, we're trying to curse, but it's not working. There's there's like a, a strange protection over this character, over this candidate. And I'm telling you, God is in this. And whether or not whether or not we see the victory we're looking for, Jesus is Lord, and we're going to have an outcome for the church regardless. But I got to tell you, this is very serious right now. We're on the one yard line. We're getting down to it. We only have days now until we make the decision of our lifetime for the future of our children. And if you don't know who to, to stand up for, you need to, you need to get right with God. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. So the Lord's making a way. It is time to strike down this antichrist spirit of the wicked lizard overlord agenda, the lizard mafia and their goblin masters and all this nonsense that's going on out there. And this spirit of Belial, the spirit of evil that's trying to be rushed into the territory in this Jezebel scenario, I believe is going to be cast out. That's what I'm believing God for, that it will be cast out of our nation in Jesus name, that Jezebel will not reign in the land of the living. He will, she will not reign in the territory. I'm believing that the Spirit of God is making a way for you and your children. And I believe that we have one more round of redemptive instability, but there can be prosperity for your children's children and your posterity in the land of the living. And all this lying spirit that's trying to rise up and intimidate the body of Christ into inactivity is craziness. Listen, there's so many believers right now that are not even going out and casting their choice because they're just being passive. Listen, you can't do that. Everybody you know, every pastor you know, pastors, leaders, you must rise up right now. You got to do it. We're right down to it. You got to register if you haven't. And if you can, get out and, and cast your choice. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. We're at that point right now. And I'm believing the Lord is making a great way and an avenue of mercy. Intercessors has gotten us here. Uh, the fact that they stood up, Jenny Donnelly, our dear friend, and so many people that stood up on the National Mall and began to take sledgehammers with Jonathan Kahn to that, that altar to Ishtar and break it. I'm telling you, there's a victory coming in that capacity. The Lord is saying we're breaking through by many or by few. Did you know that when that happened and they smashed that altar and Jenny's up there praying and releasing the word of the Lord, something broke through in the heavens and something fell out of the sky? Something fell out of the sky over Washington, D.C. About a week previous to that, I was there. I was at that same area on the mall, and we were doing an outreach and a, a, a crusade. And suddenly I had the, the word of the Lord come to me, and I pointed at the Capitol. Behind them was the Washington Monument. Behind me was the Capitol. I turned to that, and I began to say, come down. I began to cry out to the Lord and say, come down. This thing that has come against uh, this, this land, this high thing that's exalting itself against Jesus, against the people of God, against the original foundation of our very democracy and our constitutional foundation, which is the word of God. I began to declare over the Capitol, come down come down. We walked all over D.C. and prayed. Uh, we were standing in that same event where Russell Brand and Jordan Peterson got on their knees, began to recite the Lord's Prayer, all of those things that are happening. I'm telling you, the Lord is saying, by many or by few, I can save you. And that's the prayer that Jonathan prayed when he took his armor bearer and went up to the top of a high plateau and defeated all those enemies, those Philistine enemies that stood against his land, his people. And we're there right now. We are there right now. And the Spirit of the Lord is making a great way, a great understanding, a breakthrough narrative. And I'm telling you, this is what I've prayed about since I was in Trump Tower in 2015. When I was there in 2015, I began to intercede over America. I began to pray for this man. And the Lord began to show me 
that there was another round coming. I believe we're stepping into the one more round cycle right now. I believe we're getting into the one more round, the one more round scenario where the young lions will stand up because they had to get to the point where they are now. They get tenured enough to listen to the old lions and break through. And this is where we are. We're there now. And the Lord Jesus is making a way. So we need your prayers. I'm, I'm uniting with a whole number of other wonderful leaders in the body of Christ. And there's a special meeting being put together. And whatever the Lord has, whether we're there just to pray or, or connect or lay hands, we'll see whatever the Lord has. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity that we're going to have a direct impact on what's coming. And, and I want to say to everybody who's a part of this, your partnership, the way you've been doing things, thank you because you're sending us. And um, in the last week and a half, by the time we get to that point, I will have ministered 13 times in just over a week. 13 times, different locations, everywhere. And I'm so grateful to those of you who are sending us all over and doing this. And we are just going and going because I believe that we are right there. And I am not going to lean back. I'm going to lean in like the Spirit of the Lord told me to. And I believe God is making a great way. Now, I sense 25 is going to be a year of fire, a year of challenge, a year of of shaking, but I sense there is a supernatural outpouring in 25 that people have not anticipated. Everybody's so obsessing about what we're looking at and we need to be. We need to be really looking at this, but I'm telling you what's coming in 25 is gonna be a shaking, an awakening, and in the middle of great fire, great difficulty, and things that are unprecedented in every direction economically and um, socially and militarily in every aspect there's going to be a, such a shaking but listen to me very carefully the pressure of this narrative coming into the next year is going to be so strong that whatever you do is going to be multiplied abundantly what do i mean by this if you're doing wickedness it'll be multiplied back unto you abundantly if you're doing righteousness it's going to be multiplied back unto you abundantly if you're being a good fiduciary of god's kingdom economics it's going to be multiplied back unto you abundantly and i'm telling you those that are busy about the father's business those that are keeping oil on their lamps according to matthew 25 they're going to do what god's called them to do and there's going to be a hot sauce that gets on you with an unprecedented momentum that breaks you out. I'm talking to you and your family, you and your children, you in the middle of this present evil age, Galatians 1, 4. It says so clearly, Galatians 1, 4, it is the will of God that we be delivered from this present evil age. And we are right now in the valley of disruption. It is the valley of disruption. It is the valley of saying no more. It is where David walked onto the field with Goliath there. David walked into the valley with Goliath standing there. And he looked looked at him and said, you don't have a covenant. You don't have what is required to win and seize the day. I do. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is in me and greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And David, even though he was before Jesus, all that, had the spirit of God in him taking on the spirit of Antichrist, which is a takeover, mutated DNA spirit. And David stood up to that giant and cut him down. And that is where we're going. I'm telling you, back in, back in 2020, I stood on a platform, the Lord spoke to me. And what I heard was this, David fought the bear, he fought the lion, he fought the bear, but Goliath was coming. And Goliath is the one yard line. Goliath is the one that steps up. And the Lord showed me there'd be three phases to this. There'd be the, the lion, the bear, but Goliath was coming. And right now, right now, somebody's praying for cancer on here, asking for healing for cancer. We just saw somebody get healed of something monumental last night at Pastor Troy Brewer's church where they had uh, some crazy stuff going on. And we just stand with you right now over this cancer diagnosis. I find you cancer. Get off their life right now in Jesus name. But here's the thing, going to face Goliath is where we're going. Going to face Goliath. And he used Goliath's own sword against him. I preached that for many years. My friends preached that. I'm telling you, there is this word where the weapons of our warfare are not only not carnal, they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. But as we stand faithful, the very weapons that have been used against us, they're going to turn back on the enemies. And I'm telling you, the Lord spoke something to me. And the reason people have been a little shaky on what's coming next and not fully knowing is because I heard this so clearly in the spirit. Hear me right now. Please listen to what I'm saying. I heard the words from the Spirit of God saying, I will surprise 
them all. I'm going to surprise them all. I'm going to surprise them all. I'm surprising all of them. I'm bringing a surprise that no one expected. I'm going to do a thing in your day that you would not believe though it was told to you. It's going to be a remarkable thing. The Spirit of the Lord God is making a way for you right now. An unprecedented breakthrough, an unprecedented arising and shining. You are about to outgrow the yoke, the yoke of containment. You're about to outgrow the yoke of containment. The Lord God. Now here's what I got to say to you. It might get a whole lot worse before it gets better. These wicked, evil, elite, lizard overlords are going to try to pull a stunt And the stunts are going to be filled with a number of things, including black swans, crazy events, nonsensical things that will take place. Are we there? Nonsensical, nonsensical things that will take place. And the Lord is saying, be ready. Arm yourselves in the spirit and faith and righteousness. The battle is spiritual. It is full tilt spiritual war, ladies and gentlemen. Full tilt spiritual battle. That's what this is. And I personally believe if we don't get off the wall and we press through, we continue to press. The prayers that were prayed in 2020, the intercession that came in 2020 has been paid forward and the lion is watching and the lion is acting. And that's the Lord God Almighty. I believe we're going to interrupt something that was very destructive and totally going to empower evil for the foreseeable future. I believe we're interrupting the narrative of Satan. We're interrupting the narrative of wickedness. We're interrupting the lying demons that are trying to take over our culture. We're interrupting the mutilation of our young ones. We're interrupting the spirit of Molech. We're interrupting all these things that wanted to have free reign here. And the Lord said, I have already saved the land. No, I need you to cooperate. I need you to cooperate. What do we mean by cooperate? We got to pray. We got to drive it through. It is ours to lose. And could we lose it? Sure we could. Could she win? Yes, through what they do. But I've got to tell you, even on a bad day, you are anointed for this time. God placed you here to bring you through in a present evil age. And God Almighty is in this. And we've got to cooperate. The Lord spoke to me clearly. This is now in the hands of the church. He's saying, what do you want to do? Do you want to usher in the end quicker? Or do you want to drive this thing through? And I believe right now, so in Jesus' name, we speak cease and desist to every wicked scenario, every wicked plan of unrighteousness that's trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. We speak protection over our children. We speak integrity over this election cycle. We speak life and liberty to every believer, and we speak it over the United States of America that the goodness of the Lord will be shouted from the rooftops in this land. And the repentance to repair is released across the land. I declare, repent to repair, America. Repent to repair. It's time that we repent to repair. What does that mean? Well, it'd be wonderful if the whole nation got in sackcloth and ashes and cried out to Jesus. That'd be wonderful. But what it really means, national repentance means that the nation softens its heart and begins to return to the purpose by which it was founded. In other words, we get constitutional. We begin to be a nation that does justice. It does mercy. It follows the ordinances of God as to why it was founded in the first place. And there was a glimpse of that after 9-11 when that took place. There was a glimpse of it after his ear got hit. I'm telling you, the Lord is making a way, and we could begin to lengthen this time. If we don't, we're going to preach the gospel. It's going to be amazing. The Lord Jesus is here. We're going to rise and shine, and we're going to bring light into darkness, because that's what the church does best. We are the ecclesia, and we will bring light into darkness no matter what comes next. But I've got to tell you, this is the time. This is the hour. Listen to me. If you're a grandmother and you're praying, we need to rise up together and pray. People are saying, Joseph, we missed you live. Look, I'm going to be back live more than you can imagine. I've just been traveling so much. I'm on assignment. Partners, you're sending us. You are sending us. And we're making major results where we're going because you're sending us. 
I got to tell you, don't do not do any giving except but through josephz.com. I hope you partner today. We need your help with the building. We need your help to finish these things. We are remodeling the studio. Guys, we had to do a change in our studio because we got permission finally to start remodeling. So that's beginning in the next few days now. We, we got the green light. We're moving forward. And so we changed the location of the studio because we got to film. We got things to do. And I got to tell you, we got a monumental opportunity this coming year to bring light and darkness. And we need your help ladies and gentlemen we need your help and if you're partnering here thank you if you want to give here we need you because we're going out on assignment i am telling you we're going to so many places where there are monumental leaders and god's sending us because of you to those locations and i just want to say thank you to you if you're a partner thank you so much because we're going we're going we're about to go this coming week again to be with the um god willing the former and upcoming leader. So pray for us. Prayers are working. These prayers are working. Something's happening in the world right now where the prayers are working. And it's because uh, we're seeing these responses. These these articles are coming out where uh, people who are into witchcraft and occultism and witches are coming out and saying that they are trying to pray against or curse 45 against Trump. And suddenly they're saying there's some strange protection over him. Well, I'll tell you what that is. It's because down at the Capitol, we had everybody from Jenny Donnelly to everybody else standing up and pushing back the powers of darkness over this nation. And in addition to that, the the, the church, the force of, of the church is rising up and victory is beginning to happen in a multiplied manner. We're seeing it all over. So here's what I want to say. We got to keep on praying. We got to keep on pressing into this thing because I sense very clearly, not only are they going to try to pull their little special moves as we get right up to the one yard line of this this uh, transitional season where we're picking our leaders, but we got so many other things that are just multiplying at us. I believe it's gonna be a very difficult time right up beforehand, during and after. And of course, right now we also recognize we're getting word that there's a big message going out that they're trying to say that Israel is gonna go to war with Iran. And it could be within days that it goes to the next level, uh, what, it's, what it's already been, and we gotta be in prayer. Because all these things are trying to bring a disruption and interruption and all of it. I can see mechanisms where they'd say, hey, Biden, we're going to just either say goodbye to you completely or we're going to put um, a circumstance in. And of course, I'm not driving, just so you know, Jason is. Um, but the bottom line is, is they could end up putting her in before we even get to it. Now, I, I think that the prayers are confusing darkness so much that we need to stay on it. We need to stay on it because victory will multiply. When you got them admitting from the powers of darkness that they can't quite get what they want accomplished because there's some strange form of protection. I mean, come on, that's awesome. You never hear that stuff. So we got we got a lot to do. We got to keep praying, we got to keep seeking, we got to keep doing what the Spirit of the Lord is telling us to do because there is coming, I believe, a major turn of the tide if we can see it through. It is still the churches to lose. There could still be some crazy stuff that breaks loose right on the, the day of. But I'm telling you, where we are right now is we're, we're making an impact through prayer and showing up. So we got to keep praying. There's all kinds of things they're discovering and um, that are saying we could see uh, a loss still. But if we pray, we show up, we keep doing what we're supposed to do. I believe the goodness of the Lord will manifest in the land of the living. You know what I've been praying over today, Jason? I've been praying over our partners big time because we are going into another season, another time. We're doing massive updates. We're meeting with leaders and the Lord is doing something monumental. So I've been interceding over our partners. Partners, you are the best. Thank you so much. Every giver, every partner, everybody who's been standing with us. We're so grateful to you. Um, I'm just so thankful to you, really. Um, and if you want to join our partner family, you go to josephz.com. That's the way you do it. You avoid all that crazy um, scams that are out there. And of course, this text to give number 719-259-0029, that is real. You can utilize that. But josephz.com is the way that you really make sure you're doing it right. Um, I'm going to be preaching at Troy Brewer's church tonight at Open Door in Burleson, Texas. Uh, we're in here just uh, one night only uh, for the the message. It's going to be awesome. Looking forward to it. And I just want to tell everybody, Jesus is Lord. The hand of God is on your life. 
Jesus is coming back soon and we need to be ready. And I wanna thank all of you who stand with us. We are standing with you and we're interceding over every one of you. We need your prayers, please be praying. You know, um, I've been traveling a lot because I'm on assignment right now and it's only a few more days and I'll be back in the studio regularly to be with you live every morning. Uh, right now I've just been having to do this assignment. We're doing it and I'm grateful to Jesus that we have it to do and that you're all sending us, but be praying with us. I will be back in soon to be live with you every single weekday morning. Uh, we just got a lot to get after. So thank you for partnering. Thank you for helping us. You know, the way God is moving in the world today is unconventional. There's an unconventional anointing coming on the body of Christ. There's an unconventional moving and shaking anointing that's going to begin to offend the institution. It's going to begin to release the power of God. It's going to overcome the powers of darkness. And we've got one more round coming. We've got another round coming. Listen to me, you gotta hear this. I know that we're going into a time of, of mercy, an extension of mercy. It's gonna get nuts this next year. It's gonna get absolutely nuts, but the Lord, he, you know, God must love crazy people. He's made so many of them that he's gonna have stand up, and I'm telling you, we are going to see something monumental happen. I was praying, I was seeking the Lord just some time ago. And many times when I begin to pray and seek the Lord, I, I, I sketch on the whiteboard, I start seeing things. And I'll tell you, the Lord began to minister to me. And he said these words, I'm going to surprise them all. It's like the wisdom of the wise, he's going to confound I'm just telling you, God's going to do some mighty things, not only in this church, but in the United States of America and in the nations. This year, and within the last year, I have been to Moscow two times within a year. I'm over there preaching, and we're releasing the word of the Lord. I'm in meetings. I was, was with Rick Renner, and we're there, and we're doing the word of God. We're bringing the word of God, and every place we went, people were so hungry for the word of the Lord. You know, they're not tolerating some of the things we're tolerating in this country over there. I'm not saying I agree with the politics. I'm just saying the church is beginning to thrive in Russia. It really got my attention. And I stood in one meeting and the Holy Spirit said to me, tell them exactly what I tell you to say. I said, yes, sir. I'm in the meetings and there's a lot of pastors and leaders there. And I heard the word of the Lord say, tell them that I love them and tell them, Joseph, that you love Russia. And so I said, okay. I said, the Lord loves you, and I love Russia. And we love the Russian church, and we love Russian people. And I said, America is sending a message through me. We love you. And people started bursting into tears. They started bursting into tears. There's this uh, wicked lizard overlord agenda run by their goblin masters that wants us to go into this international collision and the Lord is saying he wants to bring the gospel around the earth. So we're going to see a change come in this next season. Now, I know we're right on the precipice of some pretty scary, intense stuff. I know this coming year, it's going to be wild. People are saying, what's going to happen in the election? I believe firmly it's in the hands of the church. It's in the hands of the church. But there is a weapon. There's a secret weapon that God's given you. Well, let me say it a better way. How many of you believe the darkness is getting darker and darker? Right? It's getting darker and darker. You look around, the darkness is rising, and how deep is that darkness? You know, it's getting darker and darker and more difficult and challenging, but I got to tell you, I believe God has a secret weapon. I believe God, the Lord God Almighty, has something up his sleeve that he's going to spring on the darkness. You know what that is? Us. <laughs> he doesn't have anybody else. People say God wouldn't use this kind of vessel, that kind of vessel. God doesn't have anybody else. He's got you. He's got the body of Christ. And the body of Christ, as he is, so are we in this world. We're a dominating, terrorizing force to spiritual darkness. 
spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And when we begin to stand up and we have an identity that says, I know who I am and I know where I'm going. If somebody ever asks you as a born again, fire baptized, Holy Ghost prophetic person, who do you think you are? If you ever get that word, who do you think you are? You ought to say to them, how much time do you have? I mean it. How much time you got? As a matter of fact, your presence should demand an explanation. Wherever you go, Jesus shows up. I'm standing here in front of the White House, and in 2020, I had a prophetic word that came to me that the White House was meant to be a lighthouse. A lighthouse meaning its purpose for all nations, its purpose for America, and who resides in it really is the telling point of what's gonna happen. So as you know, we're coming into the season where we pick our leaders. We're getting very close now. And I'm standing here in Jesus' name to say, Lord, we plead the blood of the Lamb over the White House. We begin to come into agreement with your word. And I believe that God is raising up a great future for this nation. And he's saying to you right now, please come into agreement. Please agree with the word of the Lord over this land. I believe God is asking you to pray and to stand to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It is my conviction we have one more round coming, regardless of what happens next. And I believe if we stand and we walk towards this outcome in faith and favor, we are gonna see righteousness prevail. So here I am in front of the White House that is meant to be a lighthouse. And I declare it right now in Jesus' name, be a lighthouse, be a place for all nations to look at and say, my goodness, there's something right about that land. God, I ask you for one more round one more time, Lord, one more time, mercy to this place. In Jesus' name, we ask that it's filled with the peace of God and the right people at this time, in Jesus' name. I lift up the White House of the United States, and I ask you, God, to put the right person in there. We come into agreement with the right leader, the right voice to occupy and inhabit this area. My sense is that God's gonna do something we would not believe, though it were told to us in this generation. Agree with me right now for the United States of America. Lord, we lift up America. We lift up the White House. We lift up this nation. And we ask you, Lord, not for how good the nation is, not for how great of people there are. I ask you, Lord, for the sake of Jesus and the church that resides in this land, that you would again give us mercy and again move upon the land. We authorize you, Lord, to do so according to your word. In Jesus' name, let the White House become a lighthouse. Amen. Well, I'm standing here outside our World Broadcast Center. Now, with the World Broadcast Center, we have a little bit extra land that's on it. Not much, but just enough that if we wanted to add on, we could. I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment, but right now I wanna thank so many of you who've participated in making this building what it is. Now, we're getting to the point, we're going to take a major lunge forward by faith and by really good planning. And that has to do with television and advanced media. Now we're already taking dramatic steps. One very exciting thing that's happening is the Sid Roth Network has reached out to us and they're having us air our live broadcasts every day simultaneously with their television network. A simpler way of saying it is, when we go live in the morning, they will air that live on their TV network. And I gotta tell you, it is amazing what the Lord's doing to open doors for us and our partners to reach more and more viewers and people all around the world. But to really accomplish this, we've got to develop a call center, a call center that's gonna really help you and your family. We wanna to minister to you more. We wanna be able to be present for you in a greater capacity. The way we wanna move forward is with a new call center. And I'm talking high touch that beats high tech every time. What does that mean? It means when you call in that you get somebody. We're here for you in real time during our live broadcasts. And we have a place that 
will reach out and minister to you, our partners. And we just want to be here for you. If you're a viewer, a partner, we want to be available. And we have to make a place or more room for the production of our materials, meaning shipping out books to you and teachings and so much more that we are just getting into right now. And that means we have to finish this building. And to do that, we need your help. We need your help through your donations, your time, anything that you can do. By time, I mean prayer. In any way that you can spend your efforts through prayer and faith with us, we so appreciate it. But more than anything else, we're looking for partners that will help us finish this building. And if you have any interest in really sewing into this today and standing with us over the World Broadcast Center, the total cost that we have left to knock this out, to get done with phase one, we're calling it phase one because it's the studios, the building payment to pay it off in full, and in addition to that, to remodel everything inside is 1.2 million. And we're looking to knock that out this year. We need your help. We want to see this advance and we're thrilled about it. And I want to say a huge thank you to all of you who've helped with this so far. You've sewn, you've stood with us, but we have a little bit more to go. And I'd encourage you to do so today by going to josephz.com and helping us finish up this project so we can move forward and better serve you and the body of Christ. We're so grateful. Remember, it's a million for a billion. And here we are at the World Broadcast Center, and I believe that we together can get this done very quickly. I love you, I bless you, and thank you for your support. I wanna tell you about an amazing opportunity that has just been presented to us. We've had a supernatural door of opportunity open for us. Only God could do what is happening for this ministry right now. And it is involving television, network television, satellite television, going all over the world. Now, there's a lot in store for this, but let me explain. This is a word God's given us to reach a billion people for the gospel. And I feel an urgency for this coming year to advance and go forward because of the uniqueness of what God has spoken in this ministry and through this ministry in media. And here's what we have to do. To accomplish this, we not only have to buy the airtime, but we have to build out a call center and finish this building. And we are in the middle of it right now, but the timeline has just been sped up to fall time so we can be ready for the first of the year when we're gonna to begin to launch out in television in a monumental way. Now we've had an opportunity that is both fiscally responsible and financially amazing the way God has done this for us. And we have to take opportunity right now with it because it won't last long. So here's what I'm asking you. Would you consider supporting us helping us build out the call center, helping us finish off this building, and helping us with the budget of airtime. And it is gonna be a monumental thing, and the Lord has given us favor, and I can't wait to tell you more and more about it. But if you would consider partnering today over this, I know we can hit this target, I know we can walk through the door, and I know we can raise up a million to go win a billion. And I'm telling you, this is a God moment. It's a now word. And I'm asking you if you consider partnering with us over it. Maybe you want to become a partner, or if you are a partner, maybe you'd consider increasing your partnership today or giving a one-time offering. This is an amazing open door for this ministry and this broadcast. Everything we've prayed about, everything the Lord has told us to do is now coming to this monumental moment. Next year, we're going to reach the masses like never before, but we need your help. Please consider going to josephz.com right now and supporting this amazing open door. Thank you so very much. Well, we wanna invite you to this year's annual conference. You know, we had a great time last year. We did such a great conference together last year. Right? We had a blast. Oh, it was awesome. Power of God, prophecy, teaching, apostles, and prophets. It was awesome. Well, people were touched and we got a lot of inquiries. We did. Will you do this again? Yes. So we decided we're going to do this annual conference yes. again. Yes, and I'm quite excited about this one and we want you to join us. It's going to be really powerful when we lay hands on people. Oh, we are. It's going to be intense ministry and we want you to do everything you can to get there. We hope to see you there because we know God's going to touch you. It's a now word and with the days we're facing, you're going to need this empowerment and you're going to have hope and faith to go forward. We hope that you'll join us. And what's the name of the conference? Voice of God. Voice of God. That's what we need. 
God is always speaking. He's looking for whoever has ears to hear. So if you have ears to hear, you need to come join us. We hope to see you there. In today's world, there's a lot of noise and sensationalism by many claiming to hear the voice of God. They cite their predictions and their own experiences. Now, some are legitimate and some are not, but how do we know the difference? In some ways, prophecies become a mystified topic. Yet as global chaos is obviously increasing, it is imperative that we must hear and know the voice of God and true prophecy. I'm Joseph Z, and I just wrote this book, Demystifying the Prophetic. Now, it's taken me my whole life of walking through the Word of God and my own encounters and experiences to bring this to a place where we land at biblical truth and sound doctrine, yet absolutely celebrating the precious gift of prophecy. In this book, I deal with everything from trances and dreams, visions, deja vu even, different types of prophets, we talk about it. We even cover the topic of false prophets. How do you determine who's true and who's false? We talk about discerning the times, navigating strange encounters. People talk about angels appearing to them, entities appearing to them, they hear voices. All of these unique things we begin to deal with at a very powerful level with this book. I bring you straight to the written word of God. And I wanna to say to you, isn't it time we understand the purpose of prophecy? After all, it is the spirit of prophecy that gives testimony to Jesus. It's time for results in your life. It's time for you to begin demystifying the prophetic. This book will help you. I promise you need this book. It'll break you out of containment. It'll bring you into a place of clarity and it will open up the understanding of the voice of God and prophecy functioning in your life by the written word of God. This is gonna really help you. 